Hi everyone, thank you for being with us on our conference from Behind the Development. We're really glad to have you on board. So uh, first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Alexandre Chigny. I'm the owner of Hockey Development. I'm also Hockey Canada Certified Skill Coach and Hockey Quebec Certified Skill Coach. I'm working with uh, Major AAA here in my city. And uh, I'm also a teacher in physical education at elementary school. Um, I have worked with pro player to younger player and I have many uh, camp during summer also. So uh, thank you uh, for uh, being with us, like I said, and um, I'll let him let introduce uh, my partner, Mitch. Hey, Alex. Thanks for the introduction. So uh, this is me, Mitch Jigger. Uh, I just came back a couple of weeks ago from Russia. I'm the video coach for the Torpedo Nizhny Novgorod in the uh, KHL. I just finished my first year with them. Uh, I am the chief of hockey development in North America for Spark Contract. Uh, I'm the uh, I'm certified by Canadian Sport Institute, so I have my advanced coaching diploma. So basically, it's the uh, NCCP4. Uh, on top of that, I'm certified high performance too by Hockey Canada that I've done I think it was six or eight years ago. Uh, and I'm the owner of Behind the Bench, uh, basically a video analyst that I can guide people, coaches, players uh, with it. So I've worked with coaches from different level uh, on the video side check out my website if you need more information www.behindthebench.ca and uh, lastly basically i've worked as a head coach or, or assistant coach or gm at probably every level work uh, here in quebec from uh, u8 to uh, u20 work with as a scout in the uh, in the queue here work in the whl work in the cssl i've worked uh, youth sports i've worked with pro guys young guys now i'm working in the khl so uh, this is who i am uh, if we move to uh, to why we picked behind the development or i should say behind the development uh, it's basically, it's a mix of me and Alex. So I own Behind the Bench and his own hockey um, development in French, en français. So it's a mix of both. So that's why we had a lot of questions. Hey guys, you've made a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. So it's Behind the Me and Development in French, him. So that's a mix that we decided to merge together. So that's why it's not a mistake. It's it just uh, a mix of, of, of us. So that's why I think it's great because we want to make sure we are, we reach as much as people as we can. Uh, before moving back to Alex with uh, her speaker for uh, this presentation, I will just like to say thank you to all our partners. Uh, without them, we will never have the same exposure worldwide, for sure. Uh, everything went beyond and above so far, and thank you to all of you to make this happen. So first of all, we would like to thank uh, the coaches site. Uh, with coaches site, we, if you're using the coupon BTD21, 21, BTD21, 21, you can save $20 off of an annual membership. And if everyone who subscribe to one of the live conferences, we will giving uh, one free annual membership at the end. So in June, we would like to say thank you to coach them with them. They provide all the drawing that you can see in the conferences or after throughout the email. Uh, you can save 15% off on an annual membership by using the coupon BTD15, BTD15. Same thing as the coaches side, Coach Dem will give one free annual membership at the end of all the conferences uh, to everyone who, who subscribed to one of the conferences. And we would like to say thanks to True Hockey. Um, they will give three pairs of gloves at the end of the conferences. So we will pick three people that will receive a brand new design and buy through pair of gloves, uh, the color and the size that you, you want, obviously. So we would like to say thank you to three of them. And we would like to say thank you to Hockey Quebec and Hockey Canada to help us to be part of them and to make that uh, this country probably, not probably the best country in the world with uh, hockey. So, Alex, your turn with the presentation and the speaker for uh, today. Thanks, Mitch. We're really proud to have with us today, Joel Linius. Joel is the owner and managing director at skate to excel He's also, also a Hockey Canada certified skill coach. Joel will talk about the multifaceted 
use of our inside edge. Thank you, Joel, and enjoy everyone. Thanks, guys, again for uh, for having me tonight. Um, I guess through through COVID, just trying to find ways to sort of uh, reinvent yourself and uh, uh, push yourself and do things kind of outside of your uh, your comfort zone. And uh, so this has certainly been a fun little project for me and doing some more online stuff and some more uh, coach seminars, which has been a lot of fun. Um, we haven't been on the ice here in Edmonton for about, uh, well, I think it's about three weeks now, so we should be back next week. And it's been kind of an up and down season here, just I'm sure it's been for many people, but uh, really excited to get back on the ice next week and uh, get working with some players throughout the summer and help them get ready for uh, what hopes to be a full season next year. So um, as Alex said, this topic will be on uh, inside edges. I did present um, at the Global Skills so Showcase and it was on jab step. So a lot of uh, inside edge development and um, I just wanted to do something a little different and just kind of uh, uh, put something else out there. And again, always, always open to feedback and to learning and to um, hearing what you have to say and um yeah so a little bit about me um i'm actually from markham ontario uh, i've lived now in edmonton for five years uh i love i've loved my time in edmonton met some amazing people out here west and uh miss my family and friends for sure and it's been hard through covid not being able to see them but uh um, definitely have enjoyed my time out out west and it's been really good to me as well too so uh, i guess just a little bit of background about me um uh, I played uh, junior in Ontario, um, and then I went and played university at the University of Toronto. Uh, and then after I went and played in Europe for a couple of years professionally. Um, through that time, I got to work with some, when I was a young kid, got to work at uh, Skate on Hockey School, which is a pretty prestigious school in, in Ontario. And uh, I was just a young one there, just pushing pucks around and listening and watching and learning. Um, so I, you know, took a lot of uh, good things away from there. and. Um, and then I got to, when I finished playing hockey, I ended up working at the bank for a little bit. And uh, that certainly wasn't for me. I would end up getting to the bank full of sweat and just just wasn't the job for me. So um, and then a job popped up with uh, one of my old coaches who owns um, national training rinks. And that was kind of the start to my coaching. And uh, I started coaching AAA in the GTHL with the Toronto Red Wings uh, organization, multiple different uh, age groups. Uh, um, that was a lot of fun to kind of start my, my bench coaching. And then um, I ended up taking a job with Skate Canada and I helped uh, um, redevelop their, their power skating program called Can Power Skate. And uh, that was just an amazing experience for me and lots of learning, um, learning from figure skaters and how they um, teach their style of skating and also how they would teach power skating to, to hockey players and um, really technical, lots of details. Um, and I really love that aspect from them. Um, and then I, I ended up starting my own business, um, and that's called Skate to Excel. Uh, and then I moved out to, to Edmonton here, um, and I'm the technical director with uh, Hockey Edmonton, which is our minor hockey association, and um, get to do a lot of fun stuff with uh, player development, coach development, and program design. Um, and then with my Skate to Excel business on the side, I get to do that on the evenings and weekends, a lot of fun. Um, I've worked with Hockey Canada National Women's Program for three years. Uh, I work with our team Alberta programs, um, got to work with uh, McEwen University and um, helped to develop some programs out here called the uh, Western Flyers and our FXHP Hockey Academy for with uh, one of the Catholic schools here in Edmonton. Um, I'm also a development contracted development coach with the Oilers, so I will do uh, uh, work with their injured players or their off season or development camp. I, it's a lot of fun for me to work with that level as well, too. Uh, and then I, uh, I'm heavily involved in the female hockey as well, too. I'm the head coach of the Pandas uh, U18 AAA team here, and uh, I've really, really enjoyed that experience. So, uh, again, I don't really want to read through all of that, but I, I just, uh, you know, through all those experiences that I've been coaching, I, uh, the one thing that I would say is that each place that I've had the opportunity to, to, to work at, to coach at, to, uh, I've learned a ton, and I think it's kind of helped to shape how I coach players now and, and our philosophy when we coach as a group. So, uh, which kind of leads me into my next sort of step. Um, again, with my work with Hockey Canada, um, I'm really focused in on uh, the player development period, that pyramid that they share, which kind of includes the 
um, the six different uh, areas for eight tier five, sorry, um, technical skills, individual tactics, team tactics, team play mm -hmm. systems and strategy. Um, uh, with the team tactics and team play systems and strategy, um, I focus on those a little bit more when I'm head coaching a team. Um, but when I'm doing my skill sessions, I'm heavily focused on technical skills and individual tactics. Um, and particularly the details that are within them. So the fundamental skills of skating, puck handling, shooting, passing, checking, um, really love the, the details of within them um, and just trying to fine tune little aspects of, of players games so that they can improve in the individual tactic area as well too. So um, as we kind of show the practice plan that uh, Steven at Coach Them has helped, uh, helped me to create, um, just want to put an emphasis on how we start with really, really simple, small movements with technical skills that, to start a practice or a skill session and how those movements and those skills translate to the very last drill of our skill session, which would include making reads, making decisions um, on a more individual tactical base, whether it be one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, or, or some drill that we utilize to, to help emphasize and execute the skills that we were working on that day. So uh, just a little bit about me and, and what I, coach and what's important to me um, I certainly definitely agree with a lot of people out there that that uh, players need to learn on their own in terms of when and where and why things happen um, I'm a little bit more focused on the technical side maybe loading a leg a little bit better um, pushing a little bit more efficiently um, because I feel that if we can master those small little movements and those skills it'll just make things easier for when those players go to their coaches and are trying to execute um, team tactics or systems or, or whatnot. So um, definitely, certainly agree that um, um, reading and reacting to the game is important. And we try to end all of our practices with some sort of aspect with that. So um, this is probably the most important slide that I will uh, present on today. Um, and again, I think at times as skills coaches, especially with so much um, access to video nowadays, uh, we tend to overcomplicate development, skills, everything. Uh, and I think we have to be really careful of that. And I'm guilty of that for sure, 100%. But um, there's been a really cognizant um, awareness lately to really make sure that we're not overcomplicating things. And that goes to players that we're coaching at the NHL level or U15, which is our, our youngest level right now as well, too. So uh, we try not to overcomplicate things. Um, and so when we talk about skating, I've kind of developed them. Obviously we have our inside edge, we have our outside edge and we have our flats. Um, but when we talk about skating, the, the blade has the ability to execute three distinct tasks. Um, and I've, regardless of what edge you're on, um, I've never yet to this day seen um, a task outside of these three. Uh, and those tasks are gliding, sliding and pushing. Um, so all these crazy skills that we're seeing in the NHL and the amazing talent, um, they're built upon what we think those three skills. So um, when we design a practice plan um, and the practice plan that I've designed for this session is solely focused on sliding. So we want to start with that sliding movement and we want to make sure that that movement of the sliding skills on the inside edge, for example, for today uh, is executed at the start of the session and it's, and it's uh, utilized throughout the entire session as we go. So um, I think for us, just, just an emphasis, we're gonna talk a lot about gliding, sliding and pushing. Um, and that's why we talk about the multifaceted inside edge because it has the ability to do all three. Um, and maybe perhaps um, for people who haven't really broken down some skills, um, don't really know that all those three things can potentially happen within a specific skill. So just for example, if we take a, a crossover, for example, there is no sliding skill in a crossover, but there's two pushes and there's two glides. So we're using two skills, um, two of those tasks, sorry, within that particular skill. Um, single leg sliding, so that would obviously, um, or gliding, sorry. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well too. Um, that would just be one single task that you're using and that's just a gliding skill. So. Um, I've taken a bunch of really common skills um, and I put them within the category that I think they fall within, but some might fall within others. So um, I think this is probably the most important part of the, the uh, 
presentation. Um, hopefully you can take something out of this and, and maybe perhaps you can develop a little bit of a theme when you're developing your practice plans moving forward. Um, it could be outside edge day and we're going to work on outside edge glides and then you try to execute and have that task throughout your entire session. So uh, that's just a little bit how I would design uh, a skating specific session. Um, it would focus on one of those three tasks, whether it be gliding, sliding, or pushing. Um, so, so those tasks, when we come back to those tasks, you know, what, what are those tasks typically used for? So we've talked about the skills um, and how they relate to those tasks, but you know, what are, what are those tasks typically used for uh, and what would we use them to, to execute? So when we talk about gliding, um, a gliding skill is just a really fluid, um, controlled um, movement. You're either slowing down your pace or you're holding the same pace of what you generated before you, you were gliding. Um, some amazing examples of, of players in the NHL that are really good at this are McKinnon, Kaprizov, and, and Crosby as well, too. He's been excellent but um, over the years with his inside edge gliding, specifically with his heel-to-heel -heel motion. Um, but heel to heel skating, you can actually glide and you can actually push. So that's a skill that has both. Um, and when we're pushing with heel to heel, we're generating speed. When we're gliding, we're just holding and maintaining or slowing that speed that we generated before. Um, when we come to slides, so slides is, you know, we're, we come back to when we were in Timbits and there's a, a fish drawn on the ice with a bingo dabber and we're taught, Hey, I want you to scrape away this fish on the ice. Um, you know, that's a simple skill of um, being able to control that slide, being able to push into the ice at the, at the pressure that you want it to be pushed upon. Um, so obviously we've developed that sliding skill, particularly for stopping or, or changing direction when we're really, really young. Um, and we're seeing some amazing, amazing change i think in the game today where sliding is becoming a task that's executed so often um whereas probably say 10 years ago when um, ovechkin and crosby were kind of the prototypical nhl um, idols um sliding wasn't so much a necessarily skill so sliding we you know if we talk about outside edge with slides we're talking about a jab step or a punch turn where we use that one of those inside legs to push into the ice to you know we're, we're scraping ice we're blowing snow and we're using it to to quickly change direction which we talk about here um also slides obviously when we're pushing in the ice and and we're we're slowing down our pace as well so that's the second aspect of our, our task of sliding that uh, um, why we'd execute it um, we'd also use that slide to push and change direction um and we're going to talk about this a little later on as well too and you can when we're pushing and changing direction we're also creating new lanes for ourselves wherever that be um, and then we're also using slides for deception deception is such a huge skill within skating nowadays so um just just really understanding what that slide is used for uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about it um the thing we haven't really talked about here yet is getting behind heels of defenders um, and that's something that just that quick change of direction, that quick slide or that push into the ice. Um, we want to try to get behind the heels of the defenders, because if we can get behind their heels, that means they're moving in the opposite direction. So uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit when I show some of the videos, just really watch the skill, watch the task that they're doing of the skill, but then also watch, you know, what reads are they making? on uh, those particular opponents. You know, what are their feet doing? What are they looking at when they choose to decide to make that slide? Um, and then the last thing is, is pushes, right? We use, we use pushes all the time, whether it be striding, uh, whether it be sculling inside the zone. Um, but when we're pushing into the ice, we're, we're not slowing down and we're not holding speed, we're, we're gaining speed. Um, so that would be a, a big aspect of the pushes that, that we need to understand and how it's different from those other two where slides really kind of slow us, um, glides kind of hold and maintain the speed and pushes give us speed. They help us to maintain speed. Um, and each of these tasks are really important at certain times of the game. So, uh, when we look at pushes and we come back again to inside edge of heel to heel skating, for example, um, Crosby and Kaprizov use it all the time 
to generate speed and scan the ice, um, whether in the offensive zone, uh, it allows them to open up their body and see the ice, but they can continue to move while they're pushing with both, uh, both feet on that inside edge. So um, just really wanted to stress what these three tasks are used for um, and not specifically just the skills, but, but what they, what they're used for. So uh, this is a little bit easier. I like uh, presenting um, to people, um, in person, but uh, usually I typically uh, throw this out there to the group and I say, well, what are they doing? You know, what task? I, I'm not really looking specifically for a skill like crossover or heel to heel skating or sliding or stopping, for example. I, I, I really want you to kind of just take 10, 15 seconds to look at these four photos and then tell yourself or guess what. Uh, one of these three tasks these players are doing. And there's some really key things that I think that we can observe just from a simple photo um, to determine what those tasks are. So I'll just give you a quick 10 seconds and look through those photos and um, try to relate one or maybe multiple of those tasks to that photo. Awesome. Um, I think probably um, watching the game, especially the playoffs, one of the best players at using their outside edge is Makar. Um, he obviously is an exceptional skater and uses all edges really well, but um, some of his uh, fanciest maneuvers and his uh, most beautiful footwork really comes from that inside edge. So when we, when we look here, um, we look at this first photo, whether it be glide, slide, or push, um, I think in this particular moment, he, he's gliding, he's holding speed. Um, and I think when we're going to talk a little bit about mechanics and opportunity areas for growth, when we look at him holding the speed, so he's crossed over, he's now holding the speed, great vision up ice, his hands are off his body. Um, and his, his leg, his left leg here is bent and it's engaged. Uh, and you can kind of tell where the weight is on the ball of the foot, not on the heel. Uh, and I think the, the last really um, awesome thing about this is that this toe is close to the ice. So for two reasons, that allows him um, the quick ability to make the next maneuver, whether he wants to go to his right leg, then maybe back to his left, or just completely shift to his right altogether. Um, but then it also allows him to keep his hips square. Uh, one of the things that we see often with players is that they drag this foot behind the other and then it opens their hips, which prevents them from op optimally holding and um, gliding on that one leg. So, so here for me, um, you're seeing him execute a gliding skill. So he's generated speed before, now he's holding it on the ice while he scans and glides. Uh, if we took a, take a look at the bottom right corner, um, for me, this is a sliding skill. So he's obviously moved down the wall um, and he's used, you can see the snow that's blown by that right leg. Um, talk a little bit about mechanics. Eyes are up, hands are off the body. Um, he's nice and low and bent in, in his stance. So after the slide, there's going to have to be a push because he's going to want to get out of the skill that he's executed here. So um, again, we are seeing in this photo one task, but that task is going to eventually lead to another. Um, and for, for us, when we teach the exits are so important of skills, you could be the most skilled skater, most skilled player. You can be able to execute all the skills you want. Uh, and you actually see this a lot in the NHL where players are really skilled, but they lack the ability to exit those skills, um, whether it be with a crossover or loading a leg to push, um, to create that separation that's needed after executing the skill. And one thing we talk with players a lot is uh, it's amazing how skilled you are, but um, you have to, you have to complete the skill. You did kind of half the task. You, you were able to use some deception or use a skill to get away, but now you've got to push to get out. So again, kind of on, off on a tangent, but here he's using his right leg to slide. You can see where the snow is coming from the front half of the blade. Uh, which is where we want to see that weight um, distributed on the foot. The right leg is engaged and bent so that it will allow him to push out if he so necessarily needs. His hips are open on his left side, which would allow him to quickly change direction and get out the other way without even having to cross over. Um, if you look at this top right photo here, again, uh, for, for us, we, we would say that he's gliding. 
Um, so you look at this, this back foot, he's got weight on the front half of the blade. Here he's got front half of the blade as well. So this, we can tell right now we're on both of those inside edges. Again, excellent mechanics up top, shoulders are square, eyes are up for vision. He has the ability to look around his body um, and both legs are loaded. Um, and he has the ability now to push out of this heel to heel inside edge skill that he's executing. Um, and it's really similar to one in the bottom left. So here we would say definitely he, he's gliding for sure and will eventually come back to the task of pushing because he's going to have to push to exit the skill that he's doing. Um, here as well, we can we really look at the feet of the defender and the earth of Makar in this photo. Uh, really great job of seeing how the weight is distributed to the ball, the front half of the foot. That leg is engaged um, and we can tell that eyes are up again, hands are off the body, allows him to make quick plays and quick reads. Um, and again, this back leg is loaded to eventually push. Um, so lots of different tasks that you can kind of pinpoint and see within these photos, glides, slides, and pushes. Um, and that's from a guy who I think is exceptional at using that inside edge with all three of those tasks. Um, you may look through at Crosby and Caprizo, and I would say exceptional inside edge uh, skaters but they're a little more typical within the glide and the pushing um, where we watch with Makara, especially when he's walking the blue line up top, we've seen those crazy slides to shake uh, forwards. Um, so he has the ability to use that third task. Um, and that's just kind of the way that the game has changed from, from when Crosby played, for example, but um, you know, you can kind of observe different players who are actually better at utilizing different different uh, options through those tasks. So um, execution observation category. So, so these for us are just typical things that we look for um, when we're watching a player go through a drill, go through a pattern, go through whatever it is. Um, and they're things that uh, we would typically talk to them. So anybody who's worked with us, us would um, recognize a lot of this information on the slide deck. Um, and again, we talked about in that first slide how we as skills coaches, again, because of all the resources and the information and the coach development like this, um, we have all this information, but I think we have to be really careful how much we give to players and especially even at the highest level of play. Um, sometimes just one single point of adjustment or observation uh, is more than enough to make some quick changes. Um, and then you can kind of progress on to the next thing. So, so for us, again, for me, really heavily skating focus in particular exercises. So, um, you know, when we look through the videos and, um, even when you look through maybe for example, my Instagram account and some of the videos that are there, um, which I never wanted to post in there anyways, but I was told that I, uh, I had to start posting on Instagram, but it's been kind of fun. Um, but none of those videos are perfect. Um, and so I think sometimes in Instagram and social media, uh, we think that every drill that we post has to be perfect, but they're not. And there's so many things that, that we can adjust or discuss with the players that we're coaching. Um, so, so for us, the four areas that we discuss is, is lower body. And there's so many different things within the lower body. So we talk about engagement. Um, and again, some people, oh, 45 degrees, this and that. And yes, I know that information, but I think that players don't process that. Um, so how can we, how can we verbalize it in a, in a, uh, a manner that they really understand and it's quick to process. So we talk about engagement. So bended ankles, knees, and hips. Uh, and we often say knees over toes, knees over toes. And that, that, when you say knees over toes, that means that we're bending at our ankles, we're bending at our knees, and we've got a slight bend at our hip. I don't need to give a degree of bend. Um, they understand that they need to be engaged. And one of the pet peeves that we have um, at skill sessions is players that are just standing straight and upright. Um, and there's no, there's no right or wrong to how low that they have to go. Every player is different. Every player is a different size. Um, but we can tell if a player is actually engaged. Uh, if they're actually loading their legs, if they're actually pushing um, knees over toes, knees over toes, bend at those three points of, of flex. Um, I think one thing when we watch the videos, um, some of the players that we've coached is loading the legs fully is something that we see as a really big um, area of, of, of opportunity. 
Um, and that might even be from something that's off ice when you're doing lateral lunges or you're doing um, squats. Like, are we actually moving in our full range of motion? Or are we just kind of jumping side to side, front to back? And I think even that translation from off ice to on ice, really trying to get players to load their legs fully. Um, and if they load their legs fully, just prevents them from having to do so many unnecessary skills to get out of what they or to exit whatever they skill they chose to be in. Um, downward pressure and blade, that's huge for us when we watch players and you watch the videos and just like we look through those um, pictures, um, I can tell where the weight is distributed on the blade. Um, and for us, when weight's distributed on the heel, um, turns, turns are faster, sure, but um, we don't have really any control of the pressure that's being put onto the ice. And it makes it really hard for us to set ourselves up for a really good exit. So we talk about um, controlling that downward pressure on the blade, making sure the weight is on the front half of the foot, the ball of the foot, and really avoiding having weight, uh, weight situated on the back half of the blade. Um, and then we talked about earlier with Makar about how that toe, that toe is down on secondary skate. So if we're gliding on one leg, we want to have that second leg ready and available for the next skill, for the next movement. Um, and, and that also really has a lot to do with our hips. So if we have that secondary leg that's not on the ice dragging behind us, our hips open, our glide suffers, and it really prevents us from having that ability to quickly exit whatever single leg skill that we're executing. Um, and then again, we come back to that opening hips for the next skill, keeping our hips square. That really has a lot to do with keeping that toe down or available for the next skill. Uh, the second execution observation category we have is upper body. Um, are our eyes up? Are we looking around us? Or are we just having eyes up? You know, if we've got the puck on the right side of our body, are we looking to the left? Or are we just looking to the side of the puck? Uh, are our shoulders square to the play? Uh, are our hands away from our body so that we're able to execute turns? Um, especially for us when we talk about with turns, we're, we, we really teach no crossing of the hands. Um, it allows players to exit those skills with the ability to make the next play really quick without having to adjust um, that top hand that's kind of come inside their body. So we talk a lot about, uh, a lot about that as well too. Um, and then the, the other thing that we talk about really often is the, the head and the upper body rotation. If you want your turns or your transitions or your skills to be faster, you need to lead with your head um, because your head will rotate, your shoulders will rotate, and that turn just happens quicker. The second thing, it just, it just it makes it safer for you. Um, so it gives you the ability to be able to see what's coming next, making reads, not just the initial read. So when you make that first skill, but really good players have the ability to make secondary reads before and during the exit of their skills. So leading with the head and that upper body rotation makes that transition faster and also just makes it safer. Uh, and then the third topic we talk about a lot with players is puck management. So protecting puck. Um, getting the puck outside the bubble of the defender, so it just means the reach of their stick, um, having really good range of motion with our bottom hand, having really good control uh, of that stick with our top hand, having a good high elbow to ensure that our blade is flat on the ice, um, and extension skills, that's just movement of our bottom hand. Uh, and then we talk about crossing of hands again as well too. Uh, and then the fourth, and this kind of really only pertains to kind of the end of some of our skill sessions, but it's locations and reads. Um, you know, did you execute the skill in a really good area that would probably have um, good, good opportunity for success? Did you make a really good read? Uh, and we're going to talk about that in some of the videos that I show where players are just, we add pressure and it's token pressure. It's very specific, but the pressure is there and there's parts of the pressure that are um, really necessary for that player with the puck to make a read. And so when we add players, token, token pressure players, sorry, um, we ask them to do specific things so that the player who's executing the skills will make those particular reads. Um, and we want them to watch for things such as movement of the feet, lunging with the hands, um, lunging with the stick, uh, where's the weight distributed on the feet. So all these things that are observation areas for us as coaches should be observation areas for, for players when they're making reads on their opponents as well too. So 
Um, and last part before we get to the videos, um, just just common opportunity areas. So when you look through the videos, and again, I say they're, they're not perfect. There's lots of parts that, that we um, talk to these players about to try to make adjustments. Um, but some common opportunity areas that we see, whether with gliding, sliding or pushing of our inside edge is that our feet are too close together or they're too far apart. So just really adjusting that stance, uh, the allocation of our of our weight. Uh, on the, the part of our blade. So when you watch really closely the blade of a player who's executing a skill, where's that snow coming from? Is it coming from the heel? Is it coming from the front half? Um, because that's a quick little adjustment of, uh, that can really have some positive effects on other parts of their game. Um, are their hips square with their body? Is that secondary leg, leg, leg lagging behind? Are you lacking flexibility in your hips? Um, and again, we talked about those, are you loading your legs fully? If you don't load your leg fully, um, this adds extra unnecessary movement and it inhibits our ability to change direction whenever we want. And it probably will add, um, make us add crossovers. Not that crossovers are bad, but it's just an unnecessary skill that had to be added because we didn't load our legs fully. Um, slow exits and no separation. We harp on players all the time. Uh, it's great that they're able to execute a skill that um, we're working on or focusing on that day or a task that we're focusing on. But if their exits of that skill are poor, we'll harp on them probably just as much as, uh, uh, as with the skill. So that's something that we really try to push players um, with is making sure that the exits are clean um, with hands, with vision, with eyes, with rotation of body, but also that there's an acceleration. Take three, four quick crossovers or strides to get out of the skill. Um, and again, talking about hands too close to body, is your bottom hand static? Are you crossing your hands on your skill exits? Um, and again, coming down to poor reads and, and locations. So those are areas that, that you'll see through the videos and that, that we see typically with players from U15 all the way up to NHL that are common, common areas uh, that I would encourage you to look for. Or if you're coaching younger, really try to harp and um, talk about these particular areas with them as well. So. Um, so now we'll just kind of go to, um, some videos and, uh, just want to give you some examples of some NHL clips. So when I say, Hey, here's these three tasks, slides, glides, pushes, you know, what's this guy even talking about? And so it's just an easy way for me to break down skating skills. I don't try to mimic all the patterns and the skills that players are doing. Again, like we talked about at the start of the video, um, they really pertain to these three tasks that players are doing. So um, let's just watch the first one here of Kadri coming off the wall um, and then just watch his left leg and what he does um, before he scores here. Again, really, really great example. So if we come back here, um, he's creating separation from the defender right here. So he's got to utilize crossover. So he's pushing. Um, he's crossing over to get inside the dot lane to push to the net to create um, a scoring chance. Um, but he can't continue to go with speed the entire time. He's got to eventually either hold that pace or slow that pace in order for him to execute a, um, a shot or create an offensive opportunity. So he can't just kind of go hard that whole time. It's a really good changing of pace here. So we've crossed over. Now we're gliding left leg. And now it gives him that ability to put that puck in the net. So again, we'll play the whole thing, crossing over, gliding, left leg, and then a release. Beautiful play. Um, when we come here, uh, McKinnon, again, really similar, but off the opposite wall, um, he's going to do it on his right leg. So again, coming down the wall, he gets close to the net and recognizes that he's got to hold his speed. So here he is holding his speed on his right leg, keeping that left leg available um, and doesn't score on the chance, but a really good utilization of that glide. So if we come to here, so again, we'll just pause. So he's crossed over around that initial defender who was pushing him and squeezing him to the wall. Let me backtrack a little bit. Okay. He's gained all the speed, so he's got a ton of speed coming in. Um, he recognizes if he continues to gain speed, he's going to end up running into this second defender, or he's got an option here. So to create a bit of deception and to hold that speed that he generated without generating new speed, he uses that right leg 
to hold the speed that he generated with crossover. So here he is, right leg holds speed. Okay, this left leg is available. We've got that toe close to the ice, which would allow him to open hips or change direction quickly without crossing over. Um, keeps his hips square, keeps his shoulders square, great vision. Um, and he glides on that right leg and doesn't score, but really good um, opportunity around that defenseman. Uh, and then Kaprizov here, um, we'll just watch. He's just crazy with his uh, inside edge. So he's got the puck now. So if we kind of look through that, all the changes of pace that he has and how he uses a, his single left leg to hold speed. So if we look here, he's got that puck, he's crossed, he's going to start to cross over, gain speed. Now he's got too much speed. So he's going to use this left leg here to hold that speed. Now he's going to push out. He does it again. And now he can wrap that puck to the net. Um, really good utilization of changing speed, holding that speed with one single leg, keeping that right leg available. So if we look a little bit closer here again, left leg holds that speed and he's able to wrap again using his inside edge in a heel to heel motion. Again, pushes around, gliding inside edges and for a wrap. Um, again here, really good transition to our next slide. But again, I just, I just really want to focus on not the specific um, skills that they're doing, but the task. So again, how he's using crossovers to generate speed and how he's using one single leg at times to hold that speed. Um, again, this is kind of a separate clip, but it's a really good segue to our next slide where he's gliding and now he's pushing. He's pushing. So um, that movement up top, and if we kind of listen. That. That's what Riker calls that Gumby. I can't even imagine how talented you gotta be. He was picking up speed doing that. That's what Riker calls that Gumby. Oh my. Gets the feet out sideways like that and rides those inside edges. McCarr does it so well. Kaprizov has brought that to Minnesota. They haven't had a guy. So that's uh, for us just uh, what we would talk about. He walks it, drops it for Kaprizov. He's chased by the captain all the way up top. Um, so it brings us to our, uh, our second task. Uh, and again, this, this is pushes. So using that inside edge to generate speed, to push, to gain speed. Um, so first clip here, um, it's McDavid on a wrap and stuff. Uh, but again, recognizes that tons of pressure is approaching. So he's got to use his inside edges to generate speed, to push. Russell. Pass along the glass of McDavid. Near the net. Shoots. Scores! With the hat trick down in the corner, so therefore Nestrov has to try and pick his poison. He knows that Karras not trying to come out the short side. So, so as he comes around that net, he recognizes eyes are up. Really good read that there's some pressure in that slot that would quickly approach that far post. Post, so he's got to beat them. So he can't just use his inside edges to glide heel to heel. He's got to generate speed. He's got to push. So if you watch his feet, watch the movement of his feet, picking up his feet to generate speed. And he's going to walk out. He picks. So again, a really good read and understanding that he's got to generate speed to get to where he wants to get to and using those inside edges to push. Um, we'll come to here. Minnesota could be two on one. Kaprizov has Parisi with him. Trying to hold off Sorensen. His backhand centering path. Comes down, now watch this. Opens the hips up, protects him. Sorensen on the backside, now he goes between the legs, tries to flip it up, gets really... So, so again, yes, it's a heel to heel, and yes, there's a bit of gliding because there's no move, movement. But in order to create separation from that defender that he's using this heel to heel push on, he or glide on, he so has to push on to get around them. So we've come to here, so we've opened heel to heel, so we're in a gliding motion where we're just holding the speed on our inside Watch edges. It. But now he's used this back foot to push and to create some separation from this defender. Because if we just went heel to heel and we were gliding, it gives this opportunity for this defender to catch us or to squeeze us to the wall. But because he opened his hips 
And because he loaded his back leg and because he pushed, he's able to create Opens separation. the hips up, protects him, sorts it on the back side. Now he goes between the legs, tries to flip it up, gets ripped. To the net. So again, that's a task, a push that helped him to create an advantage to win a lane on a defender. Um, and again, kind of going retro and back old school, but again, Crosby is so great with his heel to heel, but he uses it for two, two reasons, just like Kaprizov did there to create body position, um, to glide, which is bought, which is that puck protection aspect, but also to push. So if we watch through the sequence, watch how he glides and watch when he pushes and watch how he changes the speed and the task of which he's doing. So glide. Now he's got to get speed. Push. Okay, now he's got to push. He needs speed, picking up his feet. So again, a really good changing of speed between gliding and pushing, gliding and pushing. Uh, and we in our skill session, we really try to make sure that we're executing both within a skill session, but focusing on one particular task. So again, um, a really great job here of utilizing glides and then utilizing pushes with both hands. So picks up that puck. He's got to earn body position, glides. Now he's got to create separation. Good, another escape. Good, another escape. Now he's got to create more separation, picking up his feet on those inside edges. And then we've got a goal. So again, using multiple tasks to create an advantage. Minnesota could be two on one. So Brinkstop has Parisi with him. Trying to hold off Sorensen. All right, there we go. Okay, so um, we'll just kind of talk about uh, how I would use them in a practice. Uh, I think one of my videos is not working when we uh, came here, but uh, uh, checked on the videos. But um, again, one thing I want to emphasize is that these are not drills that we would start with. We start with very simple movements. Um, I'm going to go in a bit more detail on sliding skills. Um, just because if I spent um, the entire night telling you about how we progress glides and pushes and slides, we'd be here for three hours. So. Um, I'm going to focus a lot more on slides after this. Again, I think it's a really new age skill. I think it's a skill that players need to incorporate within their game. Um, we have so typically taught glides and pushes. Um, so again, when we, when we watch these first two videos, uh, again, this video here, exceptionally talented skater. I've only given him instruction on, I want him to be creative and I want him to change his pace. Um, and so he could do whatever he wants. Uh, so he'll come off the wall for a shot, and then he's got to retrieve a puck for a second shot. But really emphasizing the use of the inside edge. Could be heel to heel. He could shoot off a glide. But again, tons of creativity in this. I gave some small framework details, but he had to play within it. Um, second part I'd known is that after this, we added passes. And then after this, we added pressure. Um, I'm still pretty not the most technologically savvy, so it's hard for me to... Um, video when I'm giving the pressure or I'm watching at times but uh, um, here we go again tons of creativity and watch just the use of uh, of the inside edge so here heel to heel to pick up speed he's picked up speed now he wants to hold it release good retrieval he's going to go heel to heel pick up speed pick up speed have vision inside the ice still picking up speed holding and release so again, constant changes of what he's doing, using heel to heel to skate, using heel to heel to glide, using one single leg to glide and release. Um, but big thing that again, you know, when we talk about those observation areas is, is he loading his legs properly? Um, does he have really good vision? How is he rotating his upper body? Where's the weight distributed on his feet? Um, is, he, is he loading his legs fully so that he can push? Um, and I think this was really well done by him. We'll look at this next video here. Um, again, what we wanted is just creativity. So we had the full ice. He, we were an inside edge day. So he's now combined a ton of different skills here. So uh, again, I gave him a framework. There was no cones. There was no pattern. Um, I said to him, I want you to generate speed using crossovers. So we had the whole ice. So use linear crossovers to generate speed. 
and then I want you to hold it. Then I want you to generate, then I want you to hold. Uh, and then again, he's a defenseman. When he got into the offensive zone, I wanted him to start to use slides and pushes to create some lanes. So he's using pushes, he's using glides, and he's using slides within the sequence. Not a ton of rules. Uh, again, really just wanted him to be creative and use whatever he so choose. So crossing over to get speed, hold, cross, hold, cross, hold, slide, push, slide, push, slide, push, and then release. Um, so again, really stressing creativity here. Uh, this video was really similar, just a different player. So again, these would kind of be middle of the road of my practice plan with the player. We would have worked on the specific gliding motions, really simple to start. Uh, and then we would have got to um, this creativity part and then we would have add passing and then we would have added pressure as well after that. So um, that's kind of how I would progress and work through glides and slides. Um, or sorry, glides and pushes, apologies. Um, so now, again, I wanted to focus on one of the tasks. Uh, so this practice plan, I think, will be made available to you. So thanks to Stephen, a coach of them. Um, he's awesome, really helpful when it comes to putting together practice plans and really good resource. And um, so, again, I put together six drills of how maybe one day we would put together sliding skills. So I executed this exact practice plan. Um, how I like to start a practice is I like there to be an individual warm up. I want to get everybody moving, but that warm up has the movement or the task within it. Um, so that when whatever task we're using here is utilized here and it translates through all of the drills and then we finish. So there's a really good translation and transferability through the drills and then it just helps us when it comes to game transfer. So the movements that I'm going to show you within this first drill you'll see within the last one. Um, and again, this just get, gets the heart rate going, gets everybody involved. Um, so these drills are typically either everybody's going at once or one person's going and one person's on rest and we blow the whistle and then we go. So really getting the heart rate up and really focusing in on the opportunity to utilize those skills. Uh, our second drill is there's a little more emphasis and more challenge uh, there would be a line so players would work through a pattern and then have a shot you can do it at both ends um, and then our third we're again we're getting a little bit more specific with our skill and starting to blend skills um, and now we're getting a bit more game specific here again still no pressure but using it off an entry so finding another way to use our sliding skills on our inside edge um, and then now we're adding a bit of down low play. And then now we add pressure, which involves reads. So individual, this allows breaks, this allows breaks, this allows breaks. And then we get to a lot more specific where players are utilizing that skill in a game situation. So uh, this practice panel will be made available to you. Um, and this is an exact practice that we've executed before. Um, so now we want to talk about slides. And I think, as I said earlier, that's the third task of our inside edges that's become um, so relevant within today's game. You're seeing so many players utilize it in so many different ways. Uh, again, I don't really copy the patterns of what these players are doing, but it all has to relate with the simple task and the ability of being able to slide on our inside edge, um, ensuring that the weight is on the front half of the blade, uh, is really important and being sure that when we slide that that leg is loaded so that we can push to get out on our exits. So uh, the rest of this uh, session now is going to focus on this particular skill of sliding. So um, this just happened the other day um, to my poor Oilers, but was a really good job by Wheeler um, using his inside edge to slide to um, change his direction and ultimately get behind the heels of the defender. So I'll play it, then I'll talk about it. So right here. So skating, slide, and then we move. And now we've created a chance for everybody else. So if we backtrack just a little bit here, um, come to this. So again, really good recognition by Wheeler. So there's a read, there's first a read. He recognizes that this, this defender here or opponent, sorry, is he's on the ice, but he's moving in that direction. So he wants to get this way. 
Uh, he wants to go in the opposite direction of where his opponent is going. So to change that direction, he uses this right leg here to slide on that inside edge and does an amazing job pulling the puck and around. And then because he's got that secondary wave of pressure, makes a really good read and then a slip pass. So, but if we look at the skill, beautiful slide. Okay, great read, pick up, slide. And now we've lost, pass, pass, goal. So again, this is not really a traditional way of using it. He's kind of done the old pizza stop that we used to teach young, young kids when we first started coaching. Um, but a great recognition, a great read that he needed to change direction. He controlled the pace of the slide um, with that right leg, and he was able to get going in the opposite direction of that um, opponent. Uh, really similar here, but just a different situation. So he, Makar, amazing at this skill. Um, he is going to pull the puck from the wall to the middle on his strong side. Uh, he's going to execute a slide on his right leg, which ultimately opens up a lane for him to get that puck to the net. But before the slide even happens, there's an ex excellent read on that defender um, to push behind the heels and get in the opposite direction. So crossing, gaining speed, slide, shift, and pull back. Actually, when we, when we look through this, there's actually two inside edge slides. One is with way harder pressure, and then one is with much lighter pressure to add a bit more deception. So again, as we pull, pulling, 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 and we'll pause, okay? So we can see kind of the toes are here. This defender is trying to push or to take away the inside. Really good job. So Makar slides, and you can see all the snow coming out on that front half of the foot. Eyes are up to make that read. He slides, okay? And now that slide will push him back towards the wall, okay? And now what it's done is change the direction of this forward at the point. And now he's made a secondary slide with his right leg and has pushed back. So really good reads. Really good utilization of that slide to push to space like we talked about earlier. Um, and now he's created an opportunity for him to get a shot off. Oh, so great job there. Um, this one here is um, it's a really amazing job by Marchand at making reads on the opponent that is checking him. Um, zoomed in a bit more on the foot because um, I want to see the slide here. But ultimately, he's just he executes a punch turn, and then he execute a quick inside edge slide on his right leg to get behind the heels of the defender. So there's a purpose. He's not just executing a pattern, and we wouldn't take this pattern and have players mimic it. We would want players to utilize the punch turn and the inside edge slide in a skill blend situation, but ultimately to get behind the heels. So if we play, so we've got punch turn, slide and push and now he's created space so amazing job so punch turn slide and go and so again you can't really see the philadelphia defender here but when we go through so he can't he can't um get behind the heels here that defender's done a really good job of steering him to the wall so we've delayed to get back up top so probably this defender here is slow to push or he's being quite aggressive. Now watch that right leg. We slide, weights on the ball of the foot. The leg is fully loaded, which allows him to push in that opposite direction. That left leg is available so he can move um, in that opposite direction as well. And then he's able to get a shot off as he shakes that defender. So again, really good reads, really good job blending of the skills and really good job utilizing that slide to create a lane for himself to move. Um, and then the other one, this was really cool. The other day, somebody sent me this. I love this clip, um, but it's off a breakout on an entry. Um, and it's a one-on-one -on -one almost. And just watch his utilization of his left leg to slide and create a shooting lane that might not have been there. So right here, this player here with the puck, I think it's Evans, slide, get around and push. It's a beautiful goal. So again, we'll kind of fast track a bit. So if we backtrack to here, 
pause. So again, this left leg is sliding because we recognize the route of this defender is here. So we wanna go here. So we use that slide, a really hard aggressive slide to change direction, to get behind the heels of the defender, to get that shot off. We use that inside edge to slide and then we push. Um, if you kind of have to be critical of this, this leg is fully extended. So he doesn't really have the ability to push far in that other direction. So that's why he ultimately shoots pretty quick. But um, what we maybe would like to see here, if we have to be picky, is for him to bend the ankle, the knee, and the hip a little more so he can push a little harder. Uh, and that's ultimately why he falls is because he's got all that weight extended but really good job, really good read on this defender, good deception to look as if he's going wide, um, great slide with that left leg and good push to get behind the heels of that defender. So three really great offensive uh, opportunities, goals that were created with a slide um, to push in the opposite direction to get behind the heels of those defenders. So. Uh, I'm going to show you now, these are all the videos of what is on that practice plan. Uh, Steven was also amazing. He linked the, um, the specific drill to my Instagram page, which has like 10 videos posted. I like posting multiple videos, um, just so you can see multiple different, um, players with, with really different skill sets executing the same sort of task. Um, so again, this is the first drill, second, third, and the next slide we will have the fourth, fifth, and sixth. But what I want you to watch for is just how is this movement translated from here all the way to the end. This practice was focused on sliding skills and sliding skills only using the inside edge. So we'll play this first video. Again, this is an individual warm up. Um, this was with partners. So while, while Zane was going here, his partner was resting, whistle would go, Zane would rest and partner would come in. Um, everybody had a device, everybody had a puck. So again, really focusing on the habits and the details within the skill, a really good slide, weights on the front half of the foot, good movement of bottom hand, good rotation of body, loading legs to push to get out. So really slow, methodical movements, really getting the footwork down, really getting the details down. Um, and again, he really has to control the slide because it's a full rotation of the body. So our first drill has tons of emphasis on control. Awesome. Um, Second drill we have now, we talked about where players are taking a turn. Uh, so again, we ask for a lot of pace within this drill and it's specifically within the exits. So they're gonna go and execute a skill. There was three progressions to this drill. This is the second progression. The first progression had one single slide and then an exit. The second progression had two slides and an exit. The third progression had two slides, then an escape and an exit. So again, things that we would really want to focus on within the drill is loading of legs, um, is where's the weight on the, on the foot, on the blade? Um, is the person having to use crossovers to get out because they haven't loaded the legs fully? Uh, what are they looking at? Are they looking at the next ring or cone? Or are they focused on the puck? Um, so lots of little details that we're looking for within this particular drill. No crosses, no crosses, good. Good, Carson Bear. Nice old bow, good. So you can kind of see a difference between the three. And again, there's no right or wrong to this drill, but we wanted to put an emphasis on loading the leg in the first slide, loading the leg in the second slide, having that um, secondary leg available to get out on an exit. Um, so as the first player, amazing player, but he's got quick, quick little feet. Um, he uses crossovers to get out. Whereas the other two guys 
are loading. The second player, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. He has the ability to load those legs. And then the third player is a little bit younger. And you can see he's really progressing and starting to figure out the loading of the legs. So all amazing players, but all just go about this in a little bit different way. Um, and again, really a strong emphasis on loading of legs as they go through the pass. So skip one, slide two, crossing no over. No crosses, no crosses, good. And better on good, the second Carson, one. better. So here's a really good shift one, shift two, open the hips, get out. So now he can cross on his exit. Shift one, shift two, exit. Really good job. Shift one, shift two, exit. Nice elbow, good. Great. So we can see still the same task is being executed here. Still the same inside edge slide. So now we've done it on a straight pass, on a zigzag. They would eventually go in in a shot. Now we're going to do it on a bit, little bit rounder of a route for these players. And we're going to add it, add the skill in and make it a little more difficult for them to load legs and push to get out. So again, three great players that just went about this in really different ways. Again, watch how they load their legs. Watch where the slide is distributed on the blade. We'll go one more time. So great job opening the hips in the first one. Good job on the second one. It's still like him to load his leg a little bit more. Now he's got to use process because if we come back here. So this leg is just not available. We've closed our hip. We've got that knee in, but the toe is down. Really good job. But as we come to here, now we've had to cross to get out. And again, it's not wrong to cross over. We never say it was wrong. But if we cross over on our exits, we can only go this way. If we can open our hips, it allows us to go either direction if we so choose a little quicker. So again, it's no wrong for the crossover, but uh, it just allows us the ability to make different decisions. Awesome. So now we'll go to the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth drill in the next slide. Um, this one's a really cool drill. Um, it's again, using that inside edge um, to slide to create a shooting lane. So they could shoot um, on the inside of the net, they could shoot through the middle of these two nets and they could shoot on the far side of the net. However, it all, they had to keep, they had to release on their forehand. You wouldn't take a backhand shot in this situation. So um, they're typically, if it's a right shot, they're gonna slide on their left leg. If it's a left shot, they're gonna slide on their right leg and then they're gonna shift their weight uh, in order to release. And again, good upper body mechanics, good hand mechanics, um, good um, puck protection as well as we go through the sequence. But um, again, asking them to be really creative. There was no, there's no cones or there was no route or there was no pattern. The only rule was is that they had to release on their forehand. Uh, and they had to slide to create a lane either around the two nets or between the two nets. Um, and the players would start on the dots in the neutral zone and really trying to get tons of reps um, and really trying to get them to be creative and get a good feel with not a lot of instruction to start. So slide, push. So really great job here of, um, of loading the legs. You can tell some load the leg a little more aggressively than others, and it allows them to push to open areas a little quicker. So again, that just all depends on a read. How fast are you coming in? How close is that defender? Where's the goalie? Where's the pressure? What route are the, of the defender's feet are they taking? 
Um, but again, we just really wanted to get the players to get a feel of how they can slide on that outside edge um, to utilize that skill to create uh, a scoring chance. Um, now we kind of progress to a little bit more game specific in terms of the location. This was as well too, their entries from both sides, um, but this is a little bit more of a down low play. So the first video here, um, it's just kind of getting a feel, ensuring that the players have vision, um, having good mechanics of the things that we spoke about earlier. And then the second one here adds the pressure where we're looking for the player to make particular reads, but still utilizing the skill that we were working with. So we start with here, Players are both on the half wall. We execute a slide down low, slide up top, and they can drive the net. And the other side is going. We want really good pace, good reps. And it's just continuous. Both sides go at opposite times. Lines are both on the hash marks. Um, really just trying to get tons of reps in with no pressure, but really focusing on the details and the mechanics within this particular drill. So sliding, loading, pushing, protecting your puck, and then acceleration on the exit. So accelerate, good. Slide, accelerate, good. Okay, so now we're gonna take this drill and we're gonna add pressure. Um, and now, yes, of course, we've asked for token pressure. So the player inside's not gonna take the puck from them, but we've asked the player, the defending player, to, to give a cue. So to either turn their feet or to lunge at a puck. So as you watch, watch the offensive players, watch if their eyes are up, watch if they're making a read, um, or are they just going through the same pattern that we did in the other drill with a player beside? Uh, and I think for, for us, this separates the elite versus the good. Um, so when we watch through this, and again, this is the first time they did it, so I'd expect the second time we go through would be quite a bit different. But watch the players. Are they moving pucks around defenders? Are they, are they moving them in or out through the bubble of the defender? Uh, are they pushing away? So that's one thing that we talk about with those inside edge slides is that when we slide, we want to push away. So now we've created space between the two opponents. So slide and don't just slide and stay there, but slide and push away, slide and push back. So are those players executing that? And that's kind of what we did in those earlier drills was like, we're sliding away from the cones. We're sliding away from the nets. So here, now they have to slide away from the defender because they're tight and there's pressure. So if we kind of, if we watch this first player, I think this is an excellent job here. Okay. There's tight pressure less than a stick length away. Um, and that stick is quite close. So if you watch him here, he pulls the puck in towards his body as he slides. Beautiful. Right. This player's feet were going there and now he's had to stop in order to catch up to this offensive player in the white who's dictating the play. Okay. We push up. Okay, now the defending player is reaching for a puck. So what does our offensive player do? Change his direction. So those are those particular cues that we look for. Are you reaching for pucks? Which route are your toes taking? What are you looking at? Um, where are your shoulders? Those are little things that, yes, we look at them offensively, but we want to, or we want to defensively, sorry, but we want to look at them offensively in order to take those cues and make those executions with that inside edge slot. more slide for reach good slide for good excellent so again as we we look through these videos oops, we'll meet them all again it's the same movement that was in the first drill and these are our six drills that we focus on that day we asked for pace we asked for acceleration on our exits um, and we were able to really kind of make some strides with this one particular task. It's not a skill, uh, it's a task. It was just a inside edge sliding task that was used in six different situations in multiple different areas of the island. So, um, 
And the last part for me is just practice implementation. So how can we incorporate this into practices? And um, this might be a little bit more for um, a head coach or someone who's not a skills coach. But I think the first thing is have a theme to practice that relates to the skating task of your choice. So if we kind of look at these three tasks, gliding, sliding, um, and pushing, right? There's an inside edge. So there's three practice plans you can develop for inside edge. And then there's outside edge. So there's three more. So those are six practice plans that you can create that are focused on one particular task. So um, for this practice plan, again, as I said, I'm gonna give to you, it's just inside edge sliding. Uh, we didn't really cover a lot on, on um, glides. There's a little bit on pushes, but um, it's solely focused on sliding. And that was the focus of the choice. But I think for coaches is being really specific on what you want to work on that day and ensuring that the movements and the tasks and the skills that start your session are found within the very last drill. Um, we actually did a game at the end. It was just simple uh, cross ice three on three. There was no goalies. So I didn't film it, but what we did is that for every goal was three points and that for every time they successfully used an inside edge slide in a really good location off a really good read, we would give them two points. So they weren't just generating goals from um, scoring. They were now utilizing in the seventh drill of the session in a cross ice three on three format, the skills that they progressed through the whole session. Um, you can use inside edges and retrievals. Uh, a lot of drills we have now should start with retrievals because uh, we're often fighting to retrieve pucks to get pucks back. Um, and we can make those retrievals um, deceptive. So um, we can use them on neutral zone regroups, offensive zone recoveries, but finding ways to ask players to use these tasks and these skills within the drills. Like don't just break out a puck, add an inside edge slide, add an inside edge turn. Um, but I think that's, that's where we talk about here is just adding drills that specifically incorporate skills um, and utilizing them within the flow drills as well too. And then the last thing I talked about there was just, just having rules or points uh, in drills or small area games that um, give credit or points to players who are utilizing, that are utilizing what you um, went through with your session. So um that's it for me. Uh, I know I'll turn it over to Mitch and Alex for, for questions, but um, uh, again, I just really wanted to be really specific with the session. Uh, I know we talked about those three tasks and focus solely on the sliding. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to anybody if they want more information on gliding and pushing, but uh, again, just kind of with the time that we had, I uh, just wanted to be a little bit more specific, but uh, again, thanks everybody for attending and thanks Alex and Mitch for setting this up and for thinking of me and inviting me. Um, certainly a lot of fun for me to show what we're doing and, and I hope to get some feedback too. I'm really uh, uh, always open to feedback and ideas that you might have and uh, maybe other ways that I can progress a drill or change something or something that I might have missed. Or um, again, if you have any questions, uh, my contact information is there. Uh, you can check out my Instagram or Twitter. I post a lot of videos on Instagram, but uh, there's tons of information in the captions. I don't know who reads them, but I still will continue to write there. I think it's fun reading them. But uh, again, thanks so much, everybody, for attending and for having me. And uh, I'll turn it over to Alex and Mitch for some some questions that they have. Yeah, thank you, Joel. I think uh, your presentation was based on details. I love it. I'm loving it. A lot of them. Uh, I hope everyone really enjoyed it. Uh, before moving to the questions, uh, again, if you have questions, you can use the chat. We're going to go through a, a bit later. Um, all our conferences are now on YouTube, so make sure you check our social media. We um, we are uploading one conferences a week, so make sure you, you, you tune in. Uh, again, make sure you like them, you share them. It's because of you we're doing this. Uh, may, uh, tomorrow, tonight, I'm going to send you right after this presentation an email with all the drills that Joel sent it or show it to you with the video and everything, make sure you click on it. If you don't receive it, uh, take a look in your spam or junk email. Usually it's going right there. I don't know why. And again, if they're not there, just uh, send me an email. I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll send it to you right away. I uh, would we'll like to start to thanks uh, all the partners, the coaches site, coach them and true. Uh, make sure to use those coupon BTD21 for the coaches side so you can save uh, $20 off the membership and uh, BTD15 with coach them so you can save 15% off 
uh, on an annual membership. Uh, both of them, you can try them for free for 10 days. Again, click on the link uh, into uh, in the email we will send later uh, today. Thanks to True, they're going to give away three pairs um, of gloves uh, at the end of all the presentation. Moving on to the question for you, Joel. First question is coming from Ryan. How have your teaching methods changed over the years? Sorry, say it again. How have... Yeah, I think... How, okay, I'll delete that second word because I just copy pasted and it was, uh, he's maybe French, that's maybe why. No, how your teaching methods change over the years? Yeah, really, really good question. Um, kind of what I uh, touched upon in there is, uh, well, the first thing is just a really strong emphasis on sliding skills. Um, and that's, again, we, we do that with outside edge as well, too. So punch turns, jab steps. Um, we see Connor does it all the time. McKinnon uses punch turns and jab steps all the time. Um, but using, you know, using our edges to slide and shave ice, to change pace, to change direction. Um, that's something that's probably within the last two years, really new to me. Uh, it wasn't something I felt very comfortable with teaching, um, before, especially kind of working with, uh, skate Canada. Um, again, that's a really uh, strong emphasis on figure skating. So really strong emphasis on form and technique and full extensions and full recoveries. So um, I've actually started to kind of move away from that. And I taught that for a really long time, uh, especially with stride, for example, reaching out in front of you and pulling back. And, you know, when you read some articles and do some studies, um, it's not necessarily the way that the fastest players skate anymore. So um, it's changed in a lot of different ways. And I coach with, some amazing people up here in Edmonton and Steven Zip and Dan Cordick. And we're, you know, we're always challenging each other and asking questions. But uh, I think for me, like one thing that stayed consistent, if I could say, is that even if it's a skill session, we're pretty demanding with pace and with uh, attention to detail. So it's not just kind of like a Sunday skate and a leisure skate. Uh, I think that's one, no matter what skill we're working on, uh, we, we harp on exits, we harp on effort. Um, if you go through a drill, don't just flick a puck in the net. So that's something that I think stayed constant. But I think in terms of the technical skills that we teach um, is just is just the game is skated so differently now. And players need to skate with deception. Um, they have to have a really, really advanced and um, multifaceted skill set. Otherwise, they're just going to fall behind. So I think adding more tools to players tool belt is certainly a method that we use. And instead of kind of being um, really specific on, you know, just a few skills, we try to give multiple, many skills. So. Uh, another question, I, I've, I've, I went through all the questions that we had in, in the forum, and to be honest with you, like you answer all of them basically. So that was, that was really good. Uh, I'll say the last one here because I was only able to grab two out of the forum. Uh, in regards to your work in coaching, what have you observed as the biggest success? For myself personally, or? Uh, I'll say yes for yourself personally, but I'll say with uh, Yelp players. So two question in one. Yeah, um, that's a really good question. I think I think myself personally is just, uh, it's just continuing to, to grow and open opportunities for myself and, and meeting new, new people. Um, you know, I, I actually don't really, I don't really know where I, you know, want to end up. I've just, I'm meeting some really amazing people, Mitch, Alex, and other people in Edmonton and all across Canada. So I think for me, the one thing is just, is meeting all these really cool people and, and all the people that have presented here too, some amazing presenters who I would consider good friends and um, mentors for me. So I think the success that I've, I've had, if you call it that, is uh, um, the best part about it is just being able to meet new people and, and learn from them. And, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to uh, agree with everything that everybody teaches you, but there's just some uh, amazing things that you can take from, from different people, different ideas. So I think for, for me, it's just the, yeah, I'm grateful for the opportunities and the success, but it's just being the opportunity to meet new people. Uh, I think young people for, for me um, would just be, getting them to understand that there's got to be effort and compete, even if it's a skill session, um, that they have to execute things with pace. And, and honestly, if they, they work hard, they, 
they can achieve a lot of things. Um, you kind of sit back and you think about yourself as a player and maybe, um, you know, when you're a coach, you think about yourself as a player and areas where you could have maybe developed. And I think for me, if I have to be honest in front of all these people was, was this side for me. And, uh, I wish that part was a little bit stronger than the mental side and the perseverance and, um, the compete and the work ethic all the time. So I think, uh, the players that work with us for a while, um, whether they're young or they're old, I think one thing that we take a lot of pride in is just, uh, ensuring that they work hard and they compete and they take pride in what they're doing. So. Thank you, Joel. Um, I have two questions from the chat and also at the end, can you, uh, put uh, back, uh, when you're sharing your screen, uh, the observation slide that you put in at the beginning for the coaches because someone want to take a snap yep. of it to have it so please but um first of all um you were elaborate you were talking about the uh, um sorry i just want to be sure that uh, uh players to avoid crossing the end exit exiting skill execution so uh, at the beginning um you were talking about just want to hear his stance on that and why he wants player to avoid crossing the ends executing executing skill execution yeah i think i think for us like we we've we've explored both um i think there's merit for both and again in skills coaching there's no right or wrong honestly but I think for us, when, when we have players that bring that in, when we cross hands is typically because our top hand gets pushed inside our body and comes across. And it's like, we're reaching to our other pocket to get whatever is in it. Right. But, um, for us, when, when we come around on an exit, um, we find that when players cross their hands, their eyes typically go to the puck because they're not as strong with their stick. So they're not leading their exits or their turns with their head and they're not rotating their shoulders. That would be the first one. Uh, and then the second piece is that they're not in a triple threat position on their exit. So they can't pass, they can't shoot, uh, and they can't really drive to make the next play. So those would be the two reasons why we focus on it. Uh, I'm really open to other ideas if somebody feels differently, but I think for us, it's just pushing that hand out, getting it, you know, on that side of the body so that we're available to make a pass, to take a shot, to drive. So we're in a triple threat position uh, and we don't have to spend time in our exit focusing on readjusting and pushing our top hand out away from our bodies. Um, because typically when we do do that, we're staring at a, at a puck. So um, increases vision and then increases your ability to make the next play. That would be my Coles notes version. Perfect. Thanks. And uh, someone was, uh, do you have the same with an outside edge practice? From what I've seen, most of are uncomfortable on outside edge. What do you think about the outside edge? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, my whole global skills showcase presentation was outside edge. So okay, there, um, I just wanted to do something different, kind of like what you'd asked here for. But uh, yeah, 100%. There's Uh, I've got tons of stuff on my Instagram too, if you want, or if you want to shoot me a message, I can send you a practice plan for that as well. But um, 100%, it's, and it would look kind of similar, a um, little bit different skills, of course, but um, similar how we would progress from start to finish. But yeah, I, di I did it in my global skills. So if you have access to coach's site, I think you can get on there. There's some outside edge work on there for sure. And it's actually a little bit, because it was a longer presentation, a little more detailed. So Um, feel free to utilize that too. But yeah, 100%, I would go through both inside and outside edges. He said, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, if you can share, uh, it's it's uh, over for the question. Um, just before you share your screen on the observation slide, oh, wait, you can do it right now. Uh, oh, Josh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you're fast. It's good. Skating goes fast. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate was really interesting honestly and uh there are so many detail in, in your presentation that i'm sure people will uh will uh use it and what i found interesting is that and uh, most of the um, the skating skill it's about poise and like we talked before at, at the beginning of presentation when you show us the picture of um avalanche uh, it's just about that so it's kind of uh It was really interesting. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone. Uh, see you next week. We have two presentations. So if you want to um, join us, we have one on Tuesday with Derek Miller. And we have also one with Dean Seymour on Thursday to pose uh, our BTV conference. Thank you. And uh, yeah, Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having me. You're